What's going on everybody? Dustin back again with Hook and Needle. Uh, welcome to my laboratory. It is winter. It's January. So I need to come up with something to do. Um, it's like 28 degrees outside, I think. So I needed to find something to keep myself busy. I pour a lot of jigs. I work on videos, video ideas. Uh, if you've seen a recent video I posted, it was called Custom Lure Paint Cast Catch. Uh, I did that video over at Baker Build Studios with him. It was the first time I got to sit down and airbrush a lure. Obviously, hook and needle is tattooing fishing. I do art and I fish. So putting the two together, I really enjoyed that. So I set up an area to do that. I've been having a lot of fun. I've been painting baits off and on now for about uh, two weeks and trying some new things. Some things don't work. Some things do. It would be cool to make some paint cast catch videos. That's my intention. And also, these videos really are just to show people how I do it. Just to show you guys what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I'm not doing this to make baits to sell them. Um, I'm just painting them for fun. If you like them, cool. If you hate them, cool. I really could care less. I just want to have fun with it and uh, paint some baits and fish them. But enough of all that, let me show you a quick rundown of what I got going on over here and let's paint a bait. Like I said, when I did that video, I did it over at Baker Build Studio. So I have a lot of things set up in mind that are very similar to the way he does things because he's the only person I've ever painted a bait with. So I used a lot of ideas and set up things a lot of the ways that he does it. Um, I'm sure it's pretty typical and pretty similar. I've watched a lot of other people online paint baits and everybody pretty much does it the same um, besides a few things here and there. But really, uh, I have my airbrush set up and I have my compressor down on the ground. Started with a very cheap setup, just the uh, master uh, set from Amazon, but I went ahead and upgraded because that airbrush, I didn't really care for it very much and I wanted to see what a better airbrush would do. So I have the Pache Raptor and it honestly is a lot better for me. I'm sure everybody's style is a little bit different. I'm still getting used to airbrushing, so I'm sure someone who's very good at airbrushing can make this work. But being newer, I feel like this one right here, it atomizes the paint a little bit more. I get less spit and splatter than I did with this one. And honestly, the internals are completely different. They're, I can see that they're similar, but just the thickness of the needle and everything is a lot better. This is the collection of paint I have so far, and I bought a bunch of these empty bottles. That's what these four are here. So I can kind of pour paints into the bottle, shake them, and come up with my own colors. A lot of them are settled right now, but shake them up, and I have some new and different colors that I can just make on my own for myself. Spray out container, dump out container, some reducer, the Alumilite UV tools and stuff up here. For Sculpey clay and painting, airbrushing, and I got other random stuff for uh, I cut vinyl and press shirts. I built a curing box, and I'm gonna have a video for how I did that as well. I have a lot of my hardware in these containers and uh, some other things I need down here. I have some bigger containers up here with blanks and uh, airbrush stuff, a lot of uh, stencil material, some sculpted clays in there. Um, I have some stencils over here and some stencil patterns up here. And that's really about it. Let's paint a bait in the uh, new spot. Let's get to it. Let's go. So what I have here is a 110 size jerk bait. It's a suspending jerk bait. And I wanna go with a shad pattern. So to start off with everything, I went ahead and laid in a white base coat, uh, just a layer of opaque white over the whole bait. I already kind of smoothed it out just a little bit with uh, a scuff pad. Just tried to smooth out some of the imperfections in the plastic from when it was molded. I dry between every layer, and then in this part, I'm laying over some silver to uh, kind of back everything with on the sides and left the belly white. Went ahead and added some gold under the eye sockets and kind of a gold stripe across the top, right below where I'm gonna be put in color. So I mixed up a uh, custom green color and that's what I'm adding in here. And you'll see it's a little bit patchy. This is from when I had the first airbrush 
and uh, I couldn't really get it to work very smoothly but with the new one it seems to go a little bit better and then also drying in between every layer I just don't put it in there over and over again because it's kind of boring at this point I'm just kind of laying a stripe of black across the top and I went in with this one and I tried to do just some freehand black around the uh, gill plates and the fin but it didn't really work out very well with it being inconsistent it was kind of blowing off and on and it just kind of looked crazy so later I fixed that but put some uh, gel super glue and lay the eyes in they're just like a silver ring holographic eye I thought they looked pretty good on this bait and then I'll go ahead and I'll get back in on here and I'm gonna course correct a little bit and get rid of some of that black I did on the sides and take that out and I cut out a pattern out of a playing card that you can see just up there in the top corner of the screen I took that playing card and I kind of ghosted in the edges and around the sides of the fins and I think it just looked a lot more uniform and a lot better and I also cut the corner of the playing card to kind of match up with the gill plate so I could go in and ghost that in too and just give it a more subtle look without it being so harsh and then from this point it was pretty much good to take out in the garage dip it in some UV and then from there put it in the curing box uh, cure the UV and uh, let's check out the final product